Earth. The word. This is my, this is the synopsis of my magical formula. This is the synopsis right here. This one phrase is how I've been able to do everything that I do. And I'm gonna break it down for you into my recipe of my formula. But this is the cake. This is the end result. Is that I outwork the work. Every trip. I got this saying one day, I think it was on Periscope or Snap or one of my many platforms that I juggle. And a lot of times I'll be snapping while I'm Periscope while I'm snapping. <laughs> then I download my Periscope to YouTube and post it later. Then I'll take a clip from that Periscope and put it on my IG. Yes, <laughs> yes. I outwork the work. And I'm gonna give you some formulas for doing that. But where I got this from is because, I'm gonna give you guys some stories. I'm gonna write this down really quick before I forget. Before I forget. I'm gonna give you the story that really sticks out of my mind, again, that, that may be me. These are the intangibles that all of you, all, can run with. So I have something called B, 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 P. And B, 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 P breaks down to one, Burning desire. Burning desire. Two. Big, audacious goals. Three. Actually, I don't even want to number them. I'm going to hyphen them, bullet point them. But you can number them if you want. Be intentional. You guys will always hear me say that if you follow me. My, one of my favorite words. And this is a very simple one. Persist. This is the magic formula to achieving anything great in life and maximizing your fullest potential in whatever you do. Rico could teach you how to wholesale, or flip, or buy and hold, or cut hair, or sell ice cream, whatever it is you want to do. But if you can't do this, if you don't have these core ingredients, you'll never be great. You might be okay, but you'll never reach your maximum potential. We got to underline this. This is so important. It deserves to underline. So what made me think about this and this phrase popped up in my head was because I thought about one day on scope, I pictured me, I remember one day, I was 17 years old, this is my senior year of high school, when I was hustling, selling drugs, and I was playing basketball, and I was going to alternative school. But I was, you know, I was hustling on the block. And so I had my bags of coke, and it was a weekday, and I'm standing out there <coughs> in the winter time, I had a blue Haley Hansen bubble coat on and it reversed to red. I remember, reversible jacket. My mom ordered it off like a, I forgot what it was called. Like Finger Hut, like one of your kind of Finger Hut magazines or whatever. George's jacket for me, whatever it was. But I was standing on a block, and I remember I started, it was like, you know, 10 of us on a block. It's cold, it's December, New Jersey. Then it's like eight of us on a the block. Then it's six of us on a the block. There's like four of us on a block. Now it's like 12, one, two in the morning. I got school the next morning, I got basketball practice, but I still had three bags left. I'm like, I made my mind at the time, I said, yo, I'm not leaving a block till I sell all my work. And so everybody ended up leaving, it's like three in the morning. I'm standing there in the cold, I'm freezing. But I had made up my mind, I wanna add something to this. This is like our asterisk of BBDP. Be crazy. I made up my mind that I, I was not leaving until I sold everything I had and I didn't. And at like 3.30 in the morning, I look down the street and I see somebody and I'm like, yeah. Here they come walking and they wanted three for 50. I sold it, I'm gone. I had a level of dedication that was insane. And that even, that even started even back to when I was younger. And it's a silly story, but I'm telling you, this is the stuff that made me me. 
It was a burning desire that I created within myself. And there's two phases when this first happened. One, I remember being in Plainfield, New Jersey. And remember, we were extremely poor. So I remember being so poor that when like Atari and like Sega Genesis and like Nintendo was out, we had a TV that like had no cable but had like static channels on it. So I would sit in front of the static channels and act like the white and, blue, the white and black static was like a game. Like that was my video game. I would watch the black and white static and pretend I was playing a video game. Mm. So I remember one time going to the lot across the street and there were these flowers that everyone said, I forgot what they're called, but they're like white flowers and like they blow in the wind and you would catch dandelion. them. Dandelion? Not dandelion, it's like something else. You catch them and you wish. A little, little, little cotton like. Yeah, little cotton ones, yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. Not fully clover, no, it's like some white cotton like that flower. That's the dandelion. Can you, can you, can you, is my water back there? Is that water back there that I have? Please. So anyway, I remember being like six, seven years old and catching one of these in an empty vacant lot in our apartments, you know, up, up the, up the, uh, across the street. Thank you, King. And I remember wishing for a million trillion dollars. <laughs> I seriously, I remember in this vacant lot by myself, like six, seven years old, like, yo, this is like, God, I don't want to be poor anymore. I just wish my mom, we had a million trillion dollars. Like, I had this burning desire since I was young not to be poor. Like, yo, I hated that. I don't want to curse if you got queens in the room. But I hated it. I hated it so bad from a young age. I hated going to the store with the food stamps. This is not when we had the little A whatever car you swipe. It was a real paper money food stamps. I hated that. I hated going to school and I had the blue food, the, the blue free lunch tickets you had to hand. All the other kids were going to buy bagels and get juices, and all they get was the one milk and the whatever they gave us. I hated it so much, it created such a burning desire in me at a young age that I made up my mind at that time that I would not be poor. I already knew where I was going to be at seven years old. I was never, ever, ever going to settle for being broke, for being poor. That was never an option. So in fourth grade, when we're playing football up in my apartment complex, and we see a broken fish tank that has all these marbles outside this garbage can. And there's some cool little marbles in the fish tank. I pick them all up, put them in the bag. I go to school the next day, everybody wants them. So I sold the first marble for five cents, 10 cents, 25 cents. Now I'm flying through these marbles. Everybody wants them. Until a couple of days later, I get down to my last four or five marbles, and now they're a dollar. In fourth grade, I learned supply and demand. I only got a few left. Y'all really want them. Price don't went up. And what I did with the money I made, about $20 to $40 I made in fourth grade, it was around Mother's Day. They had a big Mother's Day thing where they bring the flowers in and the gifts and all of that. So I went and spent all the money and bought my mom flowers and brought it home and got a beating for it because she's like, why the hell are we going to get the money from? <laughs> and the school called home saying your son was selling, soliciting in school. But my burning desire was always around me being the oldest, watching my mom be abused, watching us be poor. Like my circumstance created my burning desire. Not everyone's going to have my life experiences, my life story, but we all need to have find something that motivates you to have such a burning desire in your life that you're that committed to it that you will outwork the work, that nothing will matter. 